Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be dating unicorns. Well, I've got an email success story here from a guy. He's read my book 12 times, and for the past year and a half, which he says has been the best year and a half of his life, he's a young guy. He's in college. He just got out of a relationship with the most awesome woman he has ever dated. She was a 10 out of 10 on a scale of 1 to 10 of what he thinks, or at least what to him, is a perfect woman. He's still in college. She's since moved away, and they tried the long distance thing for a while. But after the infatuation had worn off, they're just no longer seeing each other. And so now he's obviously kind of having a hard time getting over her because she's the best thing he's ever dated in his young life. And now he's like, how do I date? How do I top that? It's kind of like, what happens when, what did the guys do when they went to the moon in the 1960s? I mean, how do you top going to the moon, right? So a lot of the astronauts came back. A lot of them had prob marital problems, alcohol problems. They just didn't have that driving purpose like they once had. So he's struggling with getting over this particular girl. And he's like, how do you, what do you do when you're used to eating $100 steak dinners every night, in essence, when you're with an awesome woman? And then because a lot of the women he's dated since her just aren't doing it for him. So I have a quote that I wrote in this topic, and then we're going to go through his email. And the quote says, time heals all wounds. The reality is that after a breakup, it takes the average person a year and a half to get over losing a really spectacular lover. Not every lover, friend, acquaintance, client, or employer is going to stay in your life forever. People are constantly coming and going in our lives. Very few people will be with you for your entire life journey. Life is change and growing and improving as a person after unexpected endings is optional. The more you become comfortable with the changes life brings, the less you will suffer from the pain that comes with being attached to the way things were. So he says, hey coach, I love you, but I hate you at the same time. I'm the best and the worst of both worlds. I mean, you get spoiled. I mean, it's like you get used to driving a Lambo around. It's like, I mean, the Toyota Camry is a nice car, but who wants to drive a Camry? I mean, why not a Ferrari or another Lambo? They don't come along every day. He says, I read the book 12 times and I use your methods to find the perfect match for me. I wrote down my ideal woman, just like you taught. And five weeks later, bam, she appeared in my life just like that. 10 out of 10 for her body, super fun, fitness enthusiast, great communicator, super successful in her career, but, but also a bit nerdy like me. We never fought once, everything was perfect, even after the infatuation period wore off. No matter how great or how in love or how spectacular things are in the beginning, once the honeymoon period is over and the infatuation period has run its course, then that's where we separate the men from the boys, so to speak. That's when you're able to look at somebody and see them for what they really are. Because, I mean, let's face it, when you meet somebody and you're goo goo gaga over them and they feel the same way, everything's great. Because you look for things to be great. What's interesting is like when people first get together, they focus on all the things they like about each other. But towards the end of the relationship, they tend to be focusing on all the things that they don't like about one another. And it's tough to move on after you've gotten spoiled, after you've gotten used to what you think is the best. In other words, when you're walking down the street with somebody in your arm, that to you satisfies you in every way. You're not looking at every other girl that walks by and thinking, damn, I wish I got to know what it was like to be with somebody like that. You literally feel like you're with the best person on the planet. But sometimes relationships just run their course. Sometimes, again, you either grow together or you grow apart. Now, for the average person that doesn't know the things that I teach, most people are in a scarcity mindset. They feel trapped. They feel too fearful of leaving the person they're with or leaving the shitty job that they're at or whatever it may be. And they never really stretch beyond their comfort zone. And when they get older or they're on their deathbed, all they have is one regret after another because they never really went for it. When you learn the things I teach, you ha realize that you actually have choice. As much as it hurts, you know that eventually you will find somebody even better. As you grow, 
you're able to attract even better quality people down the road. So he continues, after a year and a half of what I consider the best time of my life, she found out that she was moving due to family reasons. I am currently unable to move, being that I am still a junior in college, and she lives two hours away now. We tried the long distance thing, and I followed your teachings to AT, or so he believes, Skype dates, etc., but having to travel two hours to see each other was rough. We met halfway a few times, but when I wanted to bring her back to my place after it, it just wasn't ideal. I mean, going on a date where she's two hours away and say, hey, let's go back to my place, I mean, that's kind of silly. You should be going to see her or she should be coming to see you and spending time together. Not drive and have one date and then both of you drive back. That's kind of silly. After being together for a year and a half, you'd want to have her come for the weekend or you go to see her for the weekend. What I've always done when I've had long distance relationships is have the women come one time and the next time I go to see them. That way both people make a mutual effort to see one another. She decided it's best to call it quits and we ended it on loving terms. Well obviously women don't break up with guys they're head over heels in love with. And what that tells me is that more than likely by the time the year and a half had gone by, maybe things had just kind of run their course. I mean, you are a young dude. You're still, you're still in college. And quite frankly, dude, this is a hell of a fucking victory. I was 31, 32 years old before I got to have a relationship with somebody that made me feel that way. And here you are in college. Literally, you got to experience this a decade before I did. So either way, dude, it's a victory. You should feel proud of yourself. And I'm proud of you for the fact that you read this my book 12 times and you had a great experience because what you experienced with this woman, 99% of the guys out there will never know what it's like to experience that. And to me, that's a fucking tragedy. It just becomes another in a long series of regrets for the average person. I replied how you taught. I find you amazing, but I understand. If you change your mind down the road, you know where to reach me. That's about all you can really say. But at the end of the day, you should always be doing some introspection, if you will, looking to see, again, if she wasn't head over heels, if she was head over heels in love with you, she would have found a way to make it work. Again, sometimes a relationship runs its course, and that's okay. People come and go. Sometimes you'll go to work at a job, and you'll think it's awesome. Maybe six months, a year, two years later, you're getting up in the morning going, I don't really want to go to this fucking job anymore. The key is when you start feeling those feelings regarding anything, whether it's a friendship or a job or a client that you no longer enjoy working with or somebody that you're dating or in a relationship, you got to listen to that heart. You got to listen to what your heart is trying to communicate to you and follow that because I've learned in my life when you trust what you feel inside, you'll always do well. It's Every time I've had difficulty in my life is when I haven't trusted what I felt inside. I mean, after all, for those of you that have read my book, you know, that's what caused me to marry my first wife. Deep down, I knew it was really time to end, but I didn't know any better, and I had lots of little birds chirping on my ear. Don't let her get away. She's so great. Get married. Don't be a fool, Corey. Those kinds of things. I'm sure many of you know what that's like. So thank you, Coach, for helping me experience the best one and a half years of my life. But damn it, you ruined future relationships for me because all the girls back here are shitty compared to her. Well, you just haven't met somebody yet that's of equal or greater value in your eyes. At the end of the day, what you want is somebody that shares the same goals and shares the same values. I was talking to an old girlfriend of mine, actually just about two, three days ago. And one of the things that she was saying is like, I thought I would be married with kids by now. And she's kind of been a serial monogamous. She's in her, her mid thirties now and thinks about the same things. But you know, if I look back in my life, like where I was back when I was your age, I still, cause I hadn't experienced what you have just experienced. And I was thinking to myself, I'm gonna find the perfect person and we're gonna settle it down and we're gonna have to fucking white picket fence and all that great stuff. And life is just gonna be awesome because that's what I saw in all the movies that I'd seen over the course of my life up until that point. 
But I look where I am at now at 47 years old, and I've had a great fucking awesome life. I've had a lot of great experiences and a lot of memories that are just phenomenal. But how I'm living, I mean, being a life coach, I, mean, I went to school for construction management. I never expected to be doing what I'm doing now. It's just as life progresses, different opportunities present themselves. It's like, well, I think one of my favorite lousy quotes says, when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. I love that. And what's great is you had this, you have this idea of what you think your life is supposed to be like, and you think the kind of relationships that you're supposed to have. But everything you go through in life shapes you and who you become. It's part of your journey. There's some people that no matter what happens through thick and thin, through the ups and the downs, they'll be with you your whole life. But the reality is most of the people that come into your life aren't going to be with you for the whole trip. It's just the way life is. I've been casually dating right now, but still nothing has come close. Even if she's a 10 out of 10 in the looks department, she's lacking in another. It's like I went from a $100 steak to dating multiple $3 steaks with the occasional $20 one. I used to be able to at least enjoy the cheap ones, but after having such high quality for so long, I usually don't call again and just can't enjoy myself with these new women. That's awesome because you know that you have choices now. You know how good it can really be. So the bar has been raised. And the reality is you were dating a fucking unicorn. These kind of women are very rare and they don't come along very often. That's why it's important to prepare yourself so when you do meet a unicorn that you don't blow it. Because when you screw it up with the unicorn, those really fucking sting and they take a while to get over. He says, I'll never meet another 100 steak out there, it feels like. I know, I know exactly what you're thinking. I know exactly what you're feeling because I've been there. And no matter how old you get, how many girlfriends you have, how many relationships you have over the course of your life, there's always going to be a little bit of fear and a little bit of doubt. You're going to think, maybe I'm out of chances. Maybe I had all the unicorns that I'm going to have. And at the end of the day, that's just fear. What does fear stand for? False evidence appearing real. The only thing you have control over is what you do and how you show up in life. And now that you've had it so good, hopefully you won't ever settle for anything that's less than what you got to experience with her. The idea is to get better. But keep in mind, looks can be deceiving. I was actually out at dinner with a good buddy of mine the other night, this past weekend, and we were sitting at a bar outside just having dinner, catching up. His girlfriend was at some function and she wasn't going to meet up with him later. But we just hung out, had some dinner, had a few frothy beverages, shooting the shit. And this is kind of like a nice upscale place. And next thing you know, you hear crashing, glasses drop, and I look over and there's two dudes fucking fighting. And it's like, this is a nice upscale place. It's like the last thing you ex I expected to happen. And anyways, these guys are like, you know, guys, both these guys are kind of overweight and they're just kind of pulling their shirts over each other's head. I'm just going, come on, man. And one of the guys was with a really hot, I guess it was his girlfriend. And then the people in the restaurant, managers came out, broke it up, told them to leave, to get out of there. Police were called, whole nine yards. And then right afterwards, there were a couple of women that were sitting next to me. And one I'd seen out of the corner of my eye a little earlier. She was a couple people away. Fucking beautiful. This girl looked like Marissa Tomei. If you ever seen the actress Miss Marissa Tomei, just imagine a, a girl from India that looks like this. Beautiful skin, beautiful big brown eyes, lips. She's all dressed in like a uh, kind of like a business suit. Just looks fucking supermodel. Beautiful. Now, the average guy that's never dated a woman like that is just going to get totally carried away on her looks. So she sat down next to me. I'm like, hey, you missed all the excitement. And so we started talking about what had just happened because she literally – got there about two minutes after you know the guys had taken off because they wanted to leave before the police got there obviously and so we start chatting and because of the power of questions because I'm always inquisitive and I've developed this skill over the course of my life I'm always there goes the Game of Thrones pinball machine I'm always wondering it's like who are people what are they all about and so within like two minutes 
And then you're thinking, this girl's supermodel, beautiful. Every every guy would want to go out with a woman like this. She starts telling me I'm not very good in relationships. She's like, my dad was an alcoholic. He's very wealthy. You know, she's a successful girl. And she proceeds to tell me that this father of hers, when he, when he gets really pissed off, he gets really angry and really mean. And a couple years ago, he pulled the fucking sword out. And he said, I'm going to chop you up in little bits. It's like... Now, the average person looks at this beautiful package and says, this is like anybody, any dude's dream woman. But as I'm talking, she tells me this, and then she you know, starts saying that she's horrible in relationships, she's really fucked up, and you know, she also tells me that I got a felony. I got arrested two and a half years ago because she fucking punched her father. I guess he got a little too drunk, a little too belligerent. So she obviously doesn't have a very good relationship with her father, even though he's very successful very wealthy dude he, they, he called the police on her had it arrested and she got a fucking felony and it's like what are the odds of that and so after we were talking i was just sitting there going and she says i bet you didn't expect to meet anybody tonight that that would tell you a story like that and i was like no that that pretty much fucking takes the cake i did not you're right i did not expect that you definitely win win a prize but the point being is if I'd have met a girl like that in my 20s, I'd have been thinking, oh, this is the perfect dream woman. It's going to be great and spectacular. But just after asking a couple of questions with two to three minutes, I knew like, man, I would never want to date somebody like that. Even if she was nice, I wouldn't want to date somebody that had family members that were like that. I mean, can you imagine? So it's important that when you have an experience like that instead of projecting your fantasy on the other person that you start to question them and ask them questions and see them for what they really are and so when someone's telling you that they're terrible in relationships and they're not a very good communicator and they have a horrible relationship with their family it's like what Maya Angelou said when somebody tells you who they are believe them so he says I love what I do for a living and I'm, what I'm majoring in, but still knowing I was going home to that $100 steak every night was a highlight of my day. I've gone no contact, and I'm following the seven principles get an X back, exactly as you said, but even if a month later, it still feels like a punch in the gut knowing that chapter is over. Well, typically, the average man, the average woman, like I said in the quote at the beginning of the video, it takes a year and a half, typically, for those really strong feelings where they really kind of start to dissipate and you still miss them from time to time but they no longer have their hooks in in you so to speak in other words it doesn't have the same negative emotional charge that it once had and you're a young dude by the time you get to me my age i mean you're basically a decade ahead of where i am but at the end of the day it's a victory most dudes will never know what it's like to be with somebody that makes them feel that way he says, I know the book you mentioned how the British chick you dated was amazing too. Absolutely. I just talked, like I said, I talked to her a couple days ago and she's awesome. We always had a great friendship, but at the end of the day, she lived on the other side of the pond, if you will. She was going back to college. I had just started my new business and I, w I was not in a position where I could afford her and send her to school and, and all those things. We just really, we had, we shared a great relationship at a really great transitional period in our lives. And when the relationship ran its course, we've remained friends all these years. And she's one of the nicest, kindest human beings I've ever met in my life. And I know some people go, well, why are you still friends with her? It's like, well, it's not like I got dumped. It's not like, it was my idea to end the relationship. You know, the only time you go no contact with somebody is when they unilaterally change the terms of your relationship and you don't agree with that because the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. But sometimes when two people really love each other and they really care about each other, and, and this particular girlfriend, we've never argued. We've never fought. We've had disagreements, but we were always able to talk and communicate like adults. And I cherish her friendship. I'm always the dude that she calls when she has problems with her boyfriends. And hopefully, we'll always be great friends for the rest of our lives because she's a fucking cool chick. She's a unicorn. I know in the back of your book that you mentioned how this chick was amazing and how did you move on to other women after having such a high quality woman like you mentioned? Not settling, 
knowing that I can because that she was the second one that I got to really experience deep true love with that I felt she was my second unicorn if you will and once you've had one unicorn now you've done it. it's kind of like riding a bike you'll still have doubts but at the end of the day in the back of your mind you've experienced it and the older you get and the more as you go through breakups are always hard and difficult but the more you go through it it does get easier with time but it still is going to sting but at least once you've experienced it it's no longer a concept to you it's actually something that's a real experience I find myself comparing every girl that I date to her and it's really ruining it for me. The only thing that I see that is the problem is, is how you're looking at it. You're young, dude. You gotta be patient. Your whole fucking life is ahead of you. At the end of the day, enjoy it. Continue focusing on yourself. Also, again, you wanna reflect on what happened. I would be looking back through the book because if she was head over heels in love with you, she wouldn't have broken it off. So I would say probably towards the end there, things weren't as great as you thought they were. Unless maybe you would stop putting your best foot forward, which it happens as well. Some, when you're no longer really into it, you stop putting your best foot forward. And when you're dating other people that have a high self-esteem and they know it's kind of run its course, they're not going to sit and hang around. They just know that, hey, it's been great. It's kind of run its course. Let's just be friends. We should go our separate ways, whatever it happens to be. But when you're the one that gets dumped and you don't want to be dumped, then yeah, you have to walk away because to continue being friends with somebody like that is just fucking torture. And in order to create a space for somebody new so you can attract a better person, you can't be hanging on or talking to and or just interacting with somebody that you hope is going to come back when they firmly stuck you in friend zone. So if she does reach out, make her come to see you. And as long as she comes to see you three times in a row and you hang out, have fun and hook up the whole time she's there, then go visit her. But you gotta look at it from the perspective of that she needs to earn another chance with you, not the other way around. And if she's not willing to do that, then it's going to get in the way of you moving on. So in this particular case, it's like my English girlfriend. We went through, I told her, because she was calling and texting me every day after I broke up with her. She was upset. She's like, give me a chance. I just said, it's, I just need some time away. I need time to get over this, time to heal. And there was a period, I think about six, seven weeks where I didn't talk to her. I had to tell her to stop calling me and contacting me because it was, it was tearing me up. It was hard to walk away but after a month and a half because it, it was my idea but it still hurt. I needed about six weeks, seven weeks before I was able to, to say, okay, I, now I'm ready. I'm in a place where I can be friends with her. And obviously she was pretty, pretty peeved when I reached out to her and told her, it was like, okay, now we can be friends. We took some time, it's been great. So we talked it out and we've been friends ever since. I mean, sometimes, like I said, at this point in our relationship if you will friendship whatever you want to call it at this point we, we last time I saw her was in 2006 but she reaches out at least two to three times a year and it's a gift and a blessing having people like that in your life so when you meet somebody and your souls are aligned but maybe your life paths are going in a different direction as long as both of you want the same thing and you're both kind of in the same place it's okay to stay friends with them but if you've gotten dumped and you don't want to be dumped, you've gotten stuck in friend zone and you don't want to be stuck in friend zone, yeah, you have to walk away because the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to go to my site, click the products tab and book a phone or Skype audio coaching session with yours truly. And I will talk to you soon.